Hello comrades This is UFO Boston Radio You tuned in correctly This is the UFO report But Mother Russia has taken over. Say Besbidania to the Moonraker. No fucks are given. Hey, welcome to UFO Report number 151, Proof, like Bacardi. And, uh, man, we got some great stories, and I was so, so turned ruski for this particular episode when I saw that article that we're going to mention in this particular episode of the podcast, UFO Report 151. And I was so I was so taken back by the Ruskies jumping into the fray that I downloaded all this Russian stuff. Like, uh, for instance, this. Like some of you might not even recognize this. It's the national anthem. It's the Russian national anthem. I mean, oh my God, that is so awe-inspiring. I hope the NSA is not listening to this episode because I'll be 4.2 far fucked. Anyway, before we get into the two articles that we have that you already seen in the description, you probably already clicked on it. Before you even listen to the madness today that the Moonraker was talking about. And uh, listen... As soon as, as soon as I play that anthem, I can see Putty Putin sitting on the moon, shirtless, you know, riding like a moon rover or something like that. I just know. That, that image just came to mind. Uh, by the way, at the end of the podcast, I will play, <laughs> I will play the entire uh, Russian national anthem. I mean, it sounds good. I'm, I'm not Russian. I'm not defecting. But it just sounds, it's, it sounds, it's, it, it's inspiring, I guess. I don't know. Oh, uh, I don't know what to say anymore. It's just a podcast. What, what the fuck can I do? Anyway, so before we get into that, the 2018 Robert Dickies ends today. 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 November 30th. That's when this podcast is airing. As a matter of fact, it's live right now. And uh, again, somebody went in there and gave Ryan Sprague a boost. Like, he quickly jumped into first place for maybe, uh, like, half the morning. And no fucks given, somebody else went in and put Tom DeLonge and Elizondo on first again. Who's on first? What's on second? I don't know who's on third, but we'll know at the end of today. Because at midnight, November 30th, the voting ends. Over 6,500 votes. Some of you are clicking like crazy. That's all I got to say. But over 6,500 votes... And right now, Ryan Sprague is back on in third place. That's who's in third right now. Elizondo and Tom are still vying for number one. And they're not tied. Let me tell you that. They're not tied anymore. So get in there. This is it. The last few hours. It's time to get jiggy with it. It's time to put your clicker where your mouth is and support your fellow or chosen, not fellow, because you guys are not rubber dickers. You're chosen rubber dicker of choice. Go ahead and do it. Do it if you can. Well, listen. 
Uh, all I can say is this. We, we have two stories. And, and initially, all I picked was was a Texas story because I'm in that damn town at least once a week. Highway 377, I'm on there. I'm on there. And I, I never saw this thing. If you want to know what I'm talking about, let's just get, uh, love well, shoot, let's just get into it. That's right. There was a UFO that showed up in freaking Keller, Texas. Let me tell you, that's right down the damn road. And when I tell you I'm in Keller, Texas once a damn week, I'm there. And thanks, and thanks for Texas UFOs and UFO Jane for reporting this. Because again, I never see this. Where what was I there with my eyes closed? Is that what happened? Was was I was I just not paying attention? The Houston Chronicle has this article UFO sighting in Texas, Keller resident records mysterious cigar shaped object in the sky. I mean really. It's like I don't even live in the damn state. It's like I don't even live in the Dallas Fort Worth area, which is where Keller is, a little closer to Fort Worth, of course. Well, I, I swear to you, the weekends, that's where I'm at. For reasons unbeknownst to the people listening, but some of you that know me know why. And yet I didn't see this. I did not see this at all. It turns out that this uh, white object, oh, by the way, you don't have to listen to my description of this thing. If you get on... Uh, your mobile app, and just look at the picture that I used for this episode, you will see the picture that was taken of this cigar-shaped object. Now, some of the people that looked at it thought, hey, maybe it's a weather balloon. Maybe it's a blimp. Maybe it's a cloud. Maybe it's it's nothing. Maybe we're just seeing things. Well, it turns out more than one person apparently reported that there was something going on. Of course, uh, UFO people from the Texas area and the world came out of the woodwork trying to figure out what the hell was going on. There is a quote here from the witness that reported this to uh, the Texas website, Texas UFO sightings, and uh, here's a quote. It was the oddest thing I've ever seen. I watched it for 20 minutes. It didn't move. I don't think I've ever seen anything in the sky stay that still before. Not even for a few seconds, let alone 20 minutes. 20 minutes, this object, this cigar-shaped UFO, was sitting there in the sky over Keller, Texas. Fuck my life. I How, how, how could I miss this? I don't get I didn't. It's just, it's just, it's not meant for me to see a UFO today. Uh, maybe when I'm done with this podcast, maybe once I kick the bucket and I'm dead, and this podcast is dead, then the UFOs will take over the Dallas area, because yeah, they're already taking over Keller. They're just not there when I'm there. Maybe they don't want me to start shit about it. it it's probably what it is. Well, uh, the Texas UFO website, uh, I'm assuming the administrator they're quoting in here in the Houston Chronicle is UFO Jane. And according to uh, this, the administrator of the website said that they actually checked uh, the blimp schedule, the Goodyear blimp schedule, to find out whether or not the blimp was in the area. Because you know, not too far from Keller, is where the Cowboys play, the Dallas Cowboys. So yeah, it would make sense to check uh, if there was a blimp in the area, fucking around, checking out the Cowboys. Turns out there wasn't. Not on the day of the sighting, which, for the record, was November 18th. So there you go. The Moonraker missed it. I totally missed this UFO sighting in my backyard. Uh, you know, I'm I'm totally ashamed. I'm totally ashamed of this. What an opportunity to see a cigar-shaped object in the sky. Uh, fuck my life. Anyway, there's uh, two news articles for us today, really. And, uh... Oh, man. Oh yeah. I dig this song. I mean it's uh it's giving me the the heebie jeebies. Uh I got the moves now. Hey 
Hey! Hey! All right, let me stop the shit. Uh, let, let's just get to it because uh, we are talking about the Russians. Now, apparently yesterday, uh, NASA announced that it's going to have nine different companies that it's going to team up with in order to take the U.S. back to the moon, quote-unquote, and stay there. That's right, stay there. So this article is from the Daily Mail.uk. And basically, it's stating uh, this in the uh, in the title: "There's a space war brewing. Russia announces it will establish a lunar colony by 2040, just hours after NASA says it's returning to the moon to stay." Now, hey, listen, the Russians, the Russians, they can't be undone. They, they can't. They they got to do something, right? So the Federal Space Agency for Russia said, by 2040, we're going to colonize the damn moon. It's going to be a three-phased uh, plan in three stages, and that's going to be our priority. That's what we're going to fucking focus on. Fuck putting cosmonauts on the ISS. We're going to the moon. That's what they're saying. They're done. They're not fucking around anymore. So some of the firms that signed up with NASA... Yeah, you know, some uh, you know small firms, startups, but then you got Lockheed Martin, you know, also signing up for this craziness to get in there and do something. What what do you do? What do you do? The Russians want a piece of this. Twenty forty. Now NASA said that within a decade, they'll be making the return to the moon. Fantastic! I like it. But the question is, where are all these timelines coming from? What the heck is going on? The moon is right here. And again, I've got this this concern about all these timelines. By the way, if you want to read more about (laughs) about, uh, Russia's proclamation that they will be in the moon, or on the moon, by 2040, the link is in the description. Also, if you want to read the article from the Houston Chronicle, Regarding the Keller UFO, it's also in the description for you. And lastly, if you decide you want to vote for the Rubber Dickies, because it's your last day, that link is in the description as well. I'm here for you. I'm looking out for you. But let's go back to the discussion of the timelines. Here we go again with these crazy timelines. So within a decade, NASA says the United States will be back back on the moon to stay. We're going to colonize the bitch. We're going to go harvest some damn cheese. Russia comes today, a day later, and says, Oh, no, uh, you know, fuck you, Americans. You're not going to do this alone. We're going with you just uh, maybe 10 years after. uh, Because apparently the uh, geopolitical uh, atmosphere is uh, not too hot for them right now. Uh, I wonder why. And so they feel that they might not be able to get what they need in order to get up there sooner. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you can look for any help from the U.S. and uh, NASA in getting up to space this time around. So they're going to have to go at it alone. Maybe China will join. in. I, 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 well, China just landed that little, uh, the little Pokemon thing uh, on there last year, the rover that died. You know, maybe they can get together with China. But look at these timelines. So, we got a rover going to Mars in a few years. Shortly after that, we've got Elon Musk going. And then after that, we're going to decide to try to pull a a colony or a base on the moon. And then after that, about 10 years later, then Russia's going to go and and do something on the moon. These timelines are crazy. Maybe I'm just making too much of this. Maybe it's just me. But I feel like somebody needs to put all these world powers together... Uh, have the billionaires come in and watch also and figure out who's doing what. And don't forget Igor Ashabelli, you know, because he's going to have his Asgardians up there too. The world is not enough for these people. Apparently, they're going to fuck up space too. And it looks like they're going to fuck up space in the worst way. So yeah, if I was an alien, uh, you've got about five years to get the fuck off of planet Earth 
because the space around the planet is going to be a war zone. I mean, really? Does anybody disagree with that? It's going to be so fucking crazy in space around the planet. It's going to be nuts. And now we've got our buddies... Vladimir Putin riding bareback on the moon. You just can't write this shit anymore. I mean, I, I'm tired of saying that. I'm t- this is like a bad comedy. Somebody's writing a bad comedy somewhere and we, the people who are looking at space, are either enjoying it or crying on the inside really loudly. But those are the stories for today. Like I said, check out the links in the description. Uh, uh, NSA, I am going to close this episode with the National Anthem for Russia. You know, don't give two fucks about it. Don't don't get your panties in a wad. But I'm going to do it. Vesbidania, everyone. <laughs>